Hi everyone, we're going to have some fun with the Adobe Stock Library now. I'm Kyle Webster and I want to show you how to use the libraries to add images to your document quickly and easily and to then license them right from within Photoshop itself. Prior to making this video, I produced another tutorial where I showed how to use the original brushes of Edward Monk in Photoshop to create a painting like this. And what I'm going to do now is take this painting, put it in a frame, and then hang it on a gallery wall. I'll do this by making a composite image on a new document. So the first thing I want to do is open up my Creative Cloud libraries. And you'll notice there is an option right here to search Adobe Stock. First, I'm going to create a new library by clicking here on this menu, Create New Library. I'm going to entitle this Monk Painting Gallery and then hit create. Now I can add assets from any of my other presets and so on but what I'm going to do now is just start by searching the Adobe Stock Library and what I'm looking for is Museum Empty White wall. And you can see that as I'm typing, images are already appearing and I can scroll down through these images. This looks pretty much like exactly what I'd like. I can save a preview image by clicking on that cloud icon. And right here now in my libraries for the Monk Painting Gallery, I have a graphics folder and there's the image. And all I have to do is click and drag it onto my document. Simple as that. I have the option once it's dragged on there to resize it if I wish, but I'm going to use the entire image for this as my background layer. Now at the moment all I'm doing is using this image as a placeholder because as you can see there's a watermark for Adobe Stock. I'm going to continue my search now and what I need is a frame for the picture. And I think for a space like this, we could try a thin frame antique, maybe something like that. So I'm going to download that. And there it goes, right into my graphics. And all I have to do is click and drag it right over here. Now since it already gives me these handles to rotate and transform it, I'm going to rotate it and size it down a little bit. Place it here. And I love these handy guides that snap everything to center. Great feature. All right, now I think that looks pretty good right where it is. Next, I'm going to take my painting. Copy it. Go back to this image. I'm just going to paste that in there. And we will size it to fit like so. Okay. So far I think we're doing pretty well. Now I want to add a little bit of aging to my painting. I think the painting surface should be cracked. So I can, if I wish, do a search for cracked surface. Let's see what that comes up with. It's similar to what I might want to use. This looks pretty good. I like that too. Ah, that looks pretty good as well. Lots of options here to choose from. So I might download a few of these. I like this too. I'm going to start with this one. All right, now I'm ready to go. I want to license these images. Now here's the really incredible thing. Once I've placed an image, Photoshop will remember exactly how I have scaled it and where I have put it in my document so that when I license it, 
I will not have to go through the trouble of resizing and placing it again. For instance, for our background image, I'm going to hold down the control key on my computer and click, and I get this option to license the image right here. Now because I have signed up for Adobe Stock and I've gotten 10 images for free, and I used one in a previous project, I still have nine images that I can license. And so I'm going to use one of them to get this image. I'll say OK. And watch how quickly this happens. What it's doing is connecting to my Creative Cloud account. And now you'll notice that the watermark has disappeared. And what I have here is a high resolution version of this image. And you'll see that it is placed exactly where it was nothing has changed. I'll do the same thing with the frame. Control and click on the image, license the image, and it's as simple as that. Now I have this image licensed, which means I can now go through and I can start editing and make it sized correctly the way I want. While I'm licensing images, I may as well go ahead and get this soil, cracked soil texture, which I'll use to add some cracks to the painting. License that image. Now all three of these images are licensed, they are in my library, and I'm ready to go. So I'm going to zoom in here. What I'm going to do is very simple. I'm just going to reduce the opacity of the painting so I can see the frame underneath it. So I'll put that at 50% opacity. Now I can see my frame very clearly. I'll zoom in one click here. I'm going to remove the white area from that image. First, I have to make sure and rasterize this layer so it can be editable. Now it's no longer a smart object. So I've removed the white from inside of the frame, which means I can now move my painting behind the frame I'll bump that opacity back up to 100. All right, now that's a good start. Next, I'm going to take the frame and I'm going to select this bottom section here and use my Move tool to drag it up so it covers the art, like so. And we'll zoom back out. And that looks pretty good, doesn't it? I think because the frame has some depth to it, I'm going to add a very subtle drop shadow. I'll do this by double clicking on that layer, which will pull up my layer styles. And I'll click here on the FX options and select drop shadow. And in real time, I get a preview of what that's going to do. Now this is helpful because look, it creates a drop shadow not only on the painting, which is good, but it also creates a drop shadow on the wall where it's hanging. Now we have our painting hanging on the wall. All that's left for me to do is add a little bit of texture to that surface to age it a little bit. So I'll take this cracked soil texture, drag it over here. I'm going to size it way down. Rotate it. I think I'll just do it in a couple of places here in this corner maybe. I'm going to set the mode to multiply and I'm going to use my lasso tool with a feather value of 30 pixels to just get rid of that straight edge there. I'll select this part of the image and hit delete. And then I'll reduce the opacity to 50%. Let's zoom out and look at that. That looks pretty nice. I'm now going to hold down my Option key while I'm using my Move tool, and that lets me duplicate this and create another layer. And I'm going to rotate it 
this way and then tuck it up here in this corner and then resize that a little bit size it down like so so it looks different enough I'll take the original crack we created and rotate it this way put it down here in the middle get rid of a little bit of this left side here with that same value of my lasso tool a little bit of the right side I'm just selecting and then hitting the delete key and then I'll just add a little bit more here over the face and there you go a simple way to use Adobe Stock to build an image you can search right within the libraries tab here you can find what you need you can place it in your image you can change your mind as many times as you like and when you're all set to go simply license the image it will remain in place and at the same size in your composition couldn't be easier thanks for joining me for this I hope you learned something I hope you enjoyed it now go have some fun